Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 14th of July 2021 and we're publishing our regular morning update where we look at the latest news headlines, economic reports and precious metal prices. Today we can see that gold is up while silver falls, perhaps due to the terrible inflation figures announced yesterday in the United States and the pretty awful ones announced too in the United Kingdom. So let's take a look. Welcome to Illuminati Silver. It is Wednesday morning. It's a bright morning and we're going to be as quick as we can because the gardener is coming with his brand new lawn cutter. It's one of those that you sit on and drive around and it makes one hell of a noise. So before we're interrupted by the noise of a nasty diesel engine, Let's see what's happening in the news. EU to unveil landmark climate plan to phase out fossil fuels. We've been saying for many, many months, in fact, almost two years, investment firms have now cottoned on to the inverted commas Green New Deal, not necessarily that being proposed by the Democrats in the US, but climate change is moving up the agenda. Governments have signed up to it. Central bankers now are signing up to it. Investment firms are signing up to it. Whether we agree with it or not, it's the future. UK inflation surprises with strongest reading since 2018. We'll cover that in a second. And US consumer prices jump most since 2008, topping all estimates. And this is to do with the announcement yesterday as to the CPI figures that we did warn about in our weekly update on the weekend. So let's have a look at the UK first. UK inflation accelerated to the highest level in three years in June, driven by widespread price increases that challenged the Bank of England's argument that the surge would be temporary. Consumer prices climbed 2.5% from a year earlier, exceeding all but two estimates in a Bloomberg survey of 35 economists. Prices rose from May in the vast majority of 12 broad divisions, the Office for National Statistics. Say that quickly, National Statistics said Wednesday. The jump will strengthen the views among investors and a growing minority of economists that the Bank of England will raise interest rates as soon as next year as the economy recovers from the pandemic. It also shows how inflation is emerging as a test for central banks in major economies coming a day after US consumer price growth unexpectedly surged to 5.4%. Now we know, we know interest rates aren't going up. Peter Schiff has said so. He was on a broadcast not that long ago saying, no, no more interest rate rises. Impossible. The banks can't do it. Well, you've heard it here first. Yes, they can. Yes, they will won't be huge, will be small and spread over a period of time, but there will be rises in interest rates. Watch this space. US inflation, prices paid by US consumers surged in June by the most since 2008, topping all forecasts and testing the Federal Reserve's commitment to sticking with ultra easy monetary support for the economy. The consumer price index jumped 0.9% in June and 5.4% from the same month last year. Look at that, 0.9% in June and five, almost 5.5% five year on year. Excluding the volatile food and energy components, the so-called core CPI rose 4.5%. Now this is important because we've seen the price of oil go up and we've seen the price of food go up. But even if you take those out, CPI is still 4.5%, so other things are going up as well. This is part we found interesting. Used vehicles accounted for more than a third of the gain in the CPI, the agency said. The outsize increase was also driven in large part by the pricing rebound in categories associated with a broader reopening of the economy, including hotel stays, car rentals, apparel and airfares. 
Expectations that those increases will normalise help explain the Fed's view that inflation is transitory. What they're saying is, of course, inflation's occurring at the moment because things are only just opening up. They're more expensive because of all the checks and balances they have to put in place. And, of course, because the trade will be relatively small and gradually increasing as lockdowns ease. Therefore, eventually, when things get back to normal and every firm or those that have survived reopen and are running full throttle, then we will see prices falling again. That's the argument. Inflation surprised substantially to the upside in June, but once again, owing to outsized increases in prices in a few categories, said Michel Meyer, head of US economics at Bank of America. This reinforces the idea of transitory inflation. Well, we shall wait and see how transitory it is. Some of us think it might not be running at 5%, but we now believe that the 2% target, quite frankly, is too low. We'll expect in the US 3.5% to 3 at best. So rates will have to rise at some stage. Not this year, probably. Not next year, or if it does happen next year, it'd be towards the end of the year. But certainly we see the bond tapering occurring. Perhaps not in the next couple of months but certainly by the end of the year, or at the latest by February of next year. Reuters, headline here, South African crowds rampage overnight, defying calls for end to violence looting. EU set to call time on combustion engine with two dec within two decades. This is part of that climate environment program. And I think... Oh, U.S. Senate Democrats agree to $3.5 trillion for budget reconciliation bill. We won't go into that now because we don't have time, but that is worth noting in terms of more money printing. As far as the BBC are concerned, masks to remain compulsory on London transport. So although they're easing restrictions on masks, the Mayor of London has said on our public transport, you will wear them. Now, whether we agree with masks or disagree with masks, we see the logic there. You can't have an environment where you have some people wearing them, other people not wearing them. You either have no one wearing them or everyone wearing them. That's our view, for what it's worth. Prices rises, speed up again as the economy unlocks, which is this 2.5% inflation in the UK. And if we go over to the BBC in the United States coverage, the high stakes battle over US voting rights, backlash over real gun that looks like Lego. Look at that. That is rather disconcerting, is it not? Cats defy arrest threats after fleeing Texas. We reported this yesterday. And I think that's broadly... It a good unique uh, an IPO in India f Indian food delivery unicorn opens 1.2 billion dollar IPO so trade is still continuing on the business front prices price rises speeds up again as economy unlocks N ex Nissan boss Gossen how I escaped Japan in a box carry on flying says government green plan U S warns businesses over China Xinjiang province. And I think that's broadly, should I be working at home or going to the office? That's an interesting question. And for the gamers amongst you, I have to admit the last game I played, believe it or not, was Space Invaders. What does that tell you about how old we are? Super Mario Games sells for record-breaking $1.5 million. Okay, let's have a look now. What's happening to the dollar? Marginally down, but still well above 92. In fact, well above 92.5. It's 92.66. Oil prices marginally down 44 cents for WTI crude and down 38 cents for Brent. Stocks yesterday in the United States down a third of a percent, but still very close to all time highs. In Europe and the UK currently, these are live. Obviously, the US is still closed for the moment. We have markets down, again, a quarter to half a percent. 
and Asia Pacific overnight similar situation. So yesterday we had the consumer price index come in at 0.9% against expectations of 0.5. This has been the concern and against the previous month of 0.6. So core CPI 0.9. Federal budget haven't got the figures yet on that. That hasn't been reported yet on Market Watch, and we haven't looked them up in truth. Later today, we've got the producer price index. That's worth having a look. We suspect that could even be potentially higher in line with the inflation rate, but we shall wait and see. But most of the important data is coming on Thursday and Friday now, and the, particularly look at, looking at the jobs and production and then on Friday, retail sales and consumer sentiment. We shall have a look at that. So what's happening in the world of gold? Well, over the last 24 hours, gold is up $6. If we look at it since Friday's close, Friday it closed at 1,809. It's now 1,815. So it's okay. It's okay. It's going in the right direction. Silver, however, over the last 24 hours is down 7 cents, although it's still holding about $26. And it closed at 26.13 on Friday. It's 26.10 now. So, okay, holding its own. But if the fears of inflation really do, oh, sorry, if the fears of higher rates to tackle the growing inflation does take hold, then we will see even more downward pressure on the price of silver bitcoin we have to say all the all of the all of the cryptocurrencies are crashing yesterday and today and bitcoin's down 708 dollars in fact it's performed one of the best it's only down two percent some of them have gone down 10 and 14 percent of the last 24 hours so bitcoin is now 33,190 dollars just a quick shout out to one or two videos we've produced really we do recommend you watch these please not because we just want to get the viewing figures up which we do but because they are very pertinent to the effect that they're going to have on gold and silver prices we've produced yesterday is China's economy hanging by a thread and a couple of days ago is the housing bubble about to burst if you look at none of our other videos look at those two that's it for now. It's the end of spoils. It's 1020 GMT plus one as we close this podcast video. Thank you for listening. Please, if you haven't done so, do subscribe to the channel. And if you can, share the video. We appreciate that not everyone wants to receive things from an organization called Illuminati. But you can see we're not cloak and dagger we just reveal the truth about silver and precious metals and the economy as a whole. Finally, give us a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching. Until tomorrow. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.